Right. Before I call in uh, Dr. Bavera to formally close our forum, I'd like to um, once again um, throw back the ball to Mr. Hayton and maybe, maybe sir, you can give us your last words taking stock of uh, the discussions in the both in both sessions as well as all the comments and the questions. Well, thank you all very much for coming and asking great questions and for having me. Um, um, I've really enjoyed it and uh, it's been fun to get out and uh, enter the real world again. And I think that's a slightly alarming issue with, with this, is that this is, before I was talking about the past, but now I'm talking about something that's a live uh, issue and theoretically, you know, the things that we talk about here could uh, influence the way people behave in the outside world and that could lead us closer or further away from confrontation. And you know, they're not, you know, confrontation would be a very bad thing to have. Um, overall, I would say, I mean, since we're here in the Philippines, you know, the Philippines should have some confidence in itself. Um, it's, uh, has a strong case legally, it shouldn't be psyched out either by historical arguments or by saber rattling in the Chinese media. Um, it needs to have a cool head, but it needs to kind of see these things as uh, political strategies which are, have a purpose. And it needs to think about a counter political strategy which brings soft power and hard power and citizen diplomacy and all these kinds of things together. Uh, in a way that de-escalates the situation, but also protects uh, what's important for the Philippines. I mean, one might draw a line of argument which says uh, the Philippines is currently suffering from a very high energy crisis, and it's retarding economic growth and making people's lives harder in the Philippines, and yet there are thought to be quite large gas reserves on the Reed Bank, Recto Bank, which the Philippines is unable to develop because the oil companies won't go and lease you, lease uh, oil drilling rigs because they fear a Chinese intervention. So you could say that China's attitude to territorial disputes is stopping the Philippines developing its natural gas resources. That's hindering the national development of the economy. That's keeping people poor. That's increasing people mortality. You know, children are dying because of the territorial yeah, I don't think that's too far-fetched from any link, you know, from one to the other. Okay, so you can see that there is actually uh, something at stake here for the Philippines, rather than simply a legal argument about which uh, piece of rock uh, belongs to, to which country. Um, I mean, there are many ways forward. One could just ignore the islands and just say, let's just draw lines, boundaries from our main coast and just divide up the sea that way. That's already happened in the between Malaysia and Vietnam and they sent their continental shelf submissions to the United States to the United Nations in 2009. So that's, you know, there are possible ways forward here, but we are mixed up uh, in ideology and history and senses of self and identity, and that's, you know, much, much harder to try and resolve. But I would say, you know, just because you're a young country and uh, feel relatively small compared to China. You know, don't think that the game is, is over. Um, as you uh, are discovering, there are ways forward through things through the, the arbitration tribunal and so forth, which are not going to escalate a dispute that might offer a way forward. Um, and I want you to be critical of your sources. I mean, a lot of this, you know, the situation where we are now has come about because people have not questioned and criticized the received wisdom. Um, and you know, I'm now becoming part of the Sea Crystal, so feel free to like, engage and criticise and uh, you know, shout down my sources too, because uh, it all helps in the bigger picture. Um, you are, this, you know, you, you, there is a kind of, um, there is a battle going on, and uh, we are in the middle of it, and it's, uh, it's a global battle. Uh, the United States and China are uh, engaged in a battle for, for hegemony, certainly in the region and you know, potentially you know, beyond that. 
and then there are overlapping territorial uh, disputes here. The problem is that one is the problems in one will influence the other, and vice versa. Um, I mean, the, the situation we are in some ways victims of uh, plate tectonics and um, you know, the other forces of geomorphology. Uh, the United States sits you know, with large areas of sea on either side of it, so it can stretch out to 200 nautical mile EEZs either side, um, and nobody gets in the way. Whereas China's position is ringed by Japan, the Ryukyu Islands, the Philippines, and then the Malaysian archipelago. And there's nowhere for it to feel safe in the same way the United States has been able to feel safe for centuries, so you know, bounded by uh, large amounts of ocean. And so we are kind of, you know, Geography propels us into this um, confrontation. If there were no islands in the sea, then there would be nothing to claim. We would simply just draw the boundaries, and then everybody would have an EEZ, and then there would be an area of um, uh, high seas in the middle. But because there are these islands there, it means people can claim them, and that's complicated the situation. So I don't see an easy way forward, and I see plenty of ways that it could go wrong, but I think that people on all sides realise what's at stake. Um, I mean, the, you know, from this from the perspective of the Philippines, I think the country has to avoid uh, rushing into uh, positions that it can't sustain. It needs to be patient. It needs to build bridges with all sides. Um, and this sort of tendency, sometimes for the leadership, to have very emotive responses to actions just needs to be kind of brought under control. And, uh, But um, I've got still got a bit of time before the book comes out. The uh, um, there's a Bible book on the market, as you may know, by um, uh, Robert Kaplan, and he's called his book on the region of Asia's Cauldron. And we were discussing over lunch kind of why publishers like dramatic titles to uh, to help sell their books, um, because you know it's a bit like big hawks and headlines. And you want to go, oh my God, and the crisis here, and the publisher thinks that dangerous ground isn't sufficiently dramatic enough to sell books. Um, so uh, I'm being you know, pushed and I'm, I'm looking for something that sounds just as good as Asia's Cauldron, but it isn't Asia's Cauldron. So I need some suggestions. But the thing is, it's a potential Cauldron, but that doesn't sell books. But, you know, kind of, um, there might be a crisis, or there might not be. Uh, you know, but that, the point is, it's a, you know, it tells us so much about the, the way the world is going that uh, you know, this is called a fascinating. As we wrap things up, as we wrap things up, I'd like to call in Dr. Eileen Baviera to formally close the day long event. Thank you very much, Tina. Um, well, uh, closing remarks are really to say thank you to people who we have uh, made the event very successful, and of course, the natural first person to thank is special guest uh, lecturer, Billy Nathan. I uh, especially appreciate your, your final remarks uh, for uh, connecting uh, everything that you have been uh, sharing with us uh, with the dilemma that the Philippines now finds itself in. So I thought that was very useful. This issue has really brought the imagination of the national community here. Uh, of course, uh, many you know, foreign experts um, um, scholars in international relations are looking at it very closely. But here in the Philippines, I guess in the last few years, uh, it has certainly um, been a, a major uh, topic of concern, a lot of discussions, uh, sharing of ideas, uh, debates have taken place on this issue, um, not just in the academe, but of course in you know, uh, halls among decision makers. Um, just yesterday, there was a forum here also at the University of Asian Center where uh, civil society organizations and NGOs were trying also to figure out uh, is there a role for people's diplomacy? Are there alternative approaches to conflict resolution, maybe more participatory ones, uh, other than what uh, government has been trying? Has been trying? And my, I guess my biggest indication that uh, this issue 
is considered important is when I visited my 83-year-old mother, whom I hadn't seen for about three weeks, and she greets me by asking, so what is China up to now in the West Philippine Sea? So, uh, so I think this is an important issue, and uh, it's uh, through the, uh, the uh, hard work, research work, and uh, lectures such as uh, what we have been provided by uh, Bill Hayden here, uh, that we are able to uh, perhaps uh, dissect the anatomy to deepen our understanding. Uh, and we have really moved from uh, understanding the basic issues, the historical background and all that, into looking more closely at the various stakeholders so uh, this, uh, this morning, we had a chance to look at the uh, historical uh, perspectives of China, I think the origins of the positions that it uh, now um, promotes um, this, this issue. And this afternoon, we've, taken, we've had this uh, very rare opportunity also to look closely at the uh, players, uh, individuals, uh, who help shape the discourses, the narratives, uh, um, the Chinese side, that our own decision makers also tend to react to very much. And uh, when um, these statements by the folks are publicized in the Philippine media, then it again captures the imagination of the Filipino public uh, and uh, it, it uh, inspires and fuels uh, also um, sentiments that, uh, on the one hand, um, pleases our government, that there is more nationalist uh, reaction against this. Um, on the other hand, also, perhaps uh, over the long term, we can complicate the search for solutions, as um, we have been discussing um, in this session, the uh, history, interpretations of history really, are, really play a very important role uh, in this um, regard. So, uh, let me just uh, say thank you again to Bill for sharing with us uh, not just a few hours but the whole day of a very brief uh, visit here to Manila. I'd like to thank uh, our, uh, our uh, the members of our audience, of course, our um, uh, various participants. We've had a very uh, engaging discussions, um, um, even over lunch uh, and on the sidelines of, this, um, of uh, the lectures. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge again the uh, special guests who have been very actively participating here. Uh, let me thank also our co-organizer, um, the Third World Studies Center, um, representative by uh, Director Dr. Ricardo Jose. Um, so we hope to be, we hope that you will all read Bill's book when it finally comes out. Um, it's a, again a very special opportunity you know, to, to learn about this project before it's even published. Usually we wait for authors to do book tours. Now we have a preview of this very important work that's uh, coming out. And we hope to see you again at the next uh, roundtable or lecture or forum. So, maraming salamat sa inyo.